Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another Overwatch video. Today is finally the day, the day that many Overwatch players, myself included, have been waiting for. After countless hero teases, leaks, rumours, more hints, finally, finally, today is the day that Doomfist was officially announced. But it doesn't stop there, they didn't just announce him today, he is also playable on the PTR. I've had a chance to jump in, test him out, and from the experiences I've had thus far, he is probably the most fun hero I have ever used in Overwatch. Obviously, we'll all have our personal preferences, but as someone that likes rushing people down and going in like Rambo, Doomfist is definitely a character suited to my playstyle. However, that aside, if you've seen any of the official videos or you've visited the official website, then you probably have a rough idea of what he can do already. So in this video, I thought I'd draw together everything we've currently got on this hero, his story, his abilities, how he plays in game, the whole lot, and tell you guys everything you need to know about Doomfist, the 25th hero. So if you do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated, and be sure to comment down below and let me know what you guys think. Now let's start at the top, the very beginning. Who exactly is Doomfist? Well, the Doomfist moniker has, to our knowledge, been carried by three individuals to date. We can see them on the Numbani map, and it's actually this middle one, the Scourge, who recruited the Doomfist we know today. The successor, aka our Doomfist, his real name is Akande Ogundimu. He is currently 45 years old, but he was born into a well-respected Nigerian family, heir to a prosthetic technology company. Ogundimu worked hard to expand the family business, but also practiced a whole manner of martial arts in his spare time. African fighting styles such as Dambe, as well as wrestling and other modern combat techniques too. As he got better, he started competing, taking advantage of speed, strength, and his ability to read his opponents. However, all of this came crashing down when he lost his right arm during the Omnic Crisis, which, to keep things brief, was a rebellion by the Omnics against their human creators. But that is a story for another time. Thankfully, being part of a prosthetic technology company, he was able to restore his lost limb. However, this then prevented him from taking part in future competitions, and as such, his one true passion was lost. He tried putting his all into his company, but nothing really filled the void. And this is where Akinjire Ariami came in, better known as the second Doomfist, the Scourge of Numbani. I do apologise by the way if I pronounce some of those names incorrectly. He offered Ogundimu the chance to fight alongside him as a mercenary, and while initially wary, he ultimately agreed since it gave him a platform to utilise his new abilities. He was eventually brought into the Talon organisation, and Talon's beliefs, that would later become his beliefs, were that humanity was made stronger through conflict. Talon's internal power struggles presented Ogundimu with a rather unique opportunity. As a former company man himself, Talon saw great potential in him, more so than the Scourge. They ultimately had different visions, and Ogundimu killed his teacher, taking both the Doomfist moniker and the Gauntlet. He rose up within Talon and helped orchestrate a conflict that the organisation had hoped would eventually engulf the world, realising their vision. This is of course where Overwatch came in, our Doomfist was then defeated by Winston, Tracer and Genji, locked away and then the gauntlet was taken. He then spent many years in a maximum security prison, watching events play out, biding his time and finally he broke out, returned to Talon and is now intent on finishing what he started. So that, in a nutshell, is Doomfist's backstory, but where does he actually fit in in-game? Well, Doomfist is, as mentioned, the 25th hero, and he falls under the offence category. That brings the grand total up to 8 for offence heroes, meanwhile we still have 6 defence, 6 tank, and 5 support. He's also a much more close quarter type hero, which is to be expected given his history in martial arts. His primary fire is the hand cannon. This is a short range weapon that spreads. The central UI depicts how many shots you have and you have a total of four, one for each of your knuckles. The guns are effectively on your knuckles, kind of like Wolverine, only instead of having claws come out, you have shotgun shells. You can also see whether or not you have ammo based on the actual lights on the back of your gloves. The reload on this is pretty slow, and it's automatic, so it'll happen on its own. Each shot is reloaded one after another, so you can either wait for the full reload before firing off your shots again, or you can continually fire one after another, single shot, and then of course you have a much slower fire rate. Either way, the range on this is pretty short, it is much more like a shotgun, and despite the fact that this is your primary fire option, it's not going to be your default attack choice. Now, the official numbers on this aren't out just yet, but from testing, it seems each shotgun pellet deals around 12 damage, and you have your usual 2 times multiplier on crit. On your alternate fire, you have the rocket punch. This utilises the Doomfist gauntlet, it's designed to be charged, so pressing this will perform a not very exciting punch, but if you hold it down, you will see this little UI element pop up. 
The longer you charge it, the more powerful it is and the further it'll go. This is how you are supposed to use the move, charging forward like some sort of angry Captain Falcon. Falcon PUNCH! Hitting an enemy with this will not only knock them back, but will also stun them in the process for about 0.2 seconds. The base punch appears to deal around 50 damage, but charging will double this output. Furthermore, if your punch then launches an enemy into a wall, that impact will then deal additional damage on top of the base. Charging also increases your distance travelled, so by default you can travel about 10 meters, but fully charged you can travel 30, which is quite the distance. Of course, moving on from there, you then have your rising uppercut or your Shoryuken. Shoryuken! This will launch you up about 5 meters in the air, and if it connects with an enemy, it does a flat 50 damage. However, you'll also float in the air at the end of this for about 0.5 seconds before you then drop down. Furthermore, this move then combos nicely with your next move, the Seismic Slam. With this, you leap forward a la Winston and you smash the ground. However, if you are in the air at any point, be that from a jump or a rising uppercut, you'll see this cone appear on the ground. Pressing E will then allow you to Seismic Slam to that location. So the uppercut slam combo will become a staple for Doomfist players. That being said, it can also be used as a recovery. So you can, if you really want to punish someone, Follow a rising uppercut with a charged rocket punch, but this will then also propel you forward in the process. However, since you're airborne, provided you have ground to land on, you can 180 and seismic slam back to safety. Pretty handy. The slam itself does about 70 damage and will cover around 20 meters. Finally, you have your ult, Meteor Strike. With this, you launch yourself into the air and you have a few seconds, five to be precise, in which you can then move this big circular targeting reticle. You can even change the orientation if you prefer an aerial view. Upon time running out, or you confirming the placement, you will then slam down onto the ground, dealing around 200 damage at the epicenter, and about 50 to anyone in the outer rim. Plus, it also stuns enemies for one second. So if you haven't killed them, then you have an opportunity to follow up with a rocket punch, a shotgun, or anything like that. The nice thing about this as well is that during the targeting phase, you are untargetable. So it's an incredible move for, say, jumping at a point and clearing, since people won't be able to stop you until you come crashing back down. Now, to tie this all together, his passive is called the Best Defense. And with this, anytime you attack with the Doom Fist, i.e., the right hand or your abilities, Rocket Punch, Seismic Slam, or Rising Uppercut, any of these attacks will grant you temporary shield. By default, Doom Fist has 250 HP. But with enough consecutive hits, he can stack enough temporary shield to get up to 400 HP. And the reason behind this is that he's supposed to be a close range fighter. He's supposed to be disruptive, something that can flank around and dive right into the action. And with that playstyle in mind, the more aggressive you are, the more tanky you become. Within reason, of course. So if you're getting harassed by a Doomfist, then you'll likely either want to put some distance between you and him, or of course call in some backup. He's powerful, he's fun as hell to use, and as someone that is supposed to be such a key, powerful figure of the Talon organization, he definitely feels the pot. Outside of combat at this stage, unfortunately, PTR doesn't have any of his skins or emotes or voice lines or anything like that, so that is something we're gonna have to wait on for a little bit. He's also unfortunately not voiced by Terry Crews, which is a bit of a bummer, but with that being said, I do think the voice he does have suits the character very well. So for the time being, that is pretty much everything you need to know about Doomfist. That's where he comes from, who he is, and how he plays in game. Now, as mentioned, he's just on the PTR for the time being, so it'll probably be a few weeks of testing, so it might be a little while before console players get a chance to go hands-on with him. But for those of you guys that do have Overwatch on PC, you can jump in right now and test him out. I'm going to leave you guys with a little bit of gameplay. Of course, right now, since it is Doomfist Day, most matches are just 6v6 Doomfist or lots of Doomfist and a few other things, but I will throw in a few snippets from a few different games. There is actually a dedicated Doomfist mode you can play right now, which is an elimination-based mode, which is the one you're seeing right now. However, I did also jump into some more conventional payload stuff and did get a couple of good games as well. So this should give you guys a chance to see him in action, at least sort of on day one. So again, if you do enjoy this, then like we super appreciate it. If you have any questions, by all means, drop them down below. And thanks for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.
Thank <laughs> you. 